morning. Praise the name of the Lord. We are the prevailing word of God community church. And we come to you on this morning with thanksgiving in our heart, with a praise on our lips, ready to give God the honor and praise right here in the sanctuary. I'm your pastor teacher on this morning, Pastor Anthony Harden, and I'm joined here on my walk with my wife, First Lady Evangelist Joyce Harden. She's here with me as we worship the Lord together, as we minister Amen. the Word together, as we worship the Lord together, along with you that are listening by way of our prayer line and, uh, and also by way of our social media. We thank God, and we want you to be reminded of these words taken from Acts, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 20, and it reads, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. We are the prevailing word of God community church, and we thank God for each and every one of you uh, that's worshiping with us on this morning. We thank God for your prayers. We thank God for uh, your support. Many of you have sent some support in uh, by way of donation, and we want to let you know that we appreciate your support. Amen. Amen. You're going to be receiving some letters in the mail quite soon, uh, expressing our thoughts and our gratitude uh, concerning your financial support. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We pray just right before we get into the Word. We pray, and we it's been our uh, desire that you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, truly, as we taught on last Sunday, you know, we don't need a special day to give God thanks. But since we are taking a special day on last week, we pray that your Thanksgiving was prosperous, that you gave God the glory, that you honored God above all. The Bible says, wherefore we eat, drink, or whatsoever we do to give him, or do it all to his praise and to his glory. Amen. 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 So we thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God for the services on uh, today. If you have your Bible, we have prepared a message for you that we believe that the Lord has given us. And we've sought the Lord for a word, and I believe the Lord has given us a word. So if you have your Bibles, we will be ministering on this morning from the NIV and from the New King James Version Bibles. As we read those passages, I'll let you know uh, which ones I'm rotating from. Praise the name of the Lord. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to go to, the, to St. Mark. St. Mark, I'm going to direct your attention to St. Mark, the 8th chapter, beginning to read at verses 34 through 38, and then we're going to move over to St. Matthew. We're going to look at, do an expose in the Gospels on this morning. So in St. Matthew, uh, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, these are familiar passages, and we want to look at them and get, again. In light of what we have been ministering on in the last few weeks, we have been ministering, as you know, in our series called You Must Be Born Again. This is message number seven, I believe, in our series, You Must Be Born Again. And our thrust, our mandate, our attention is, is focused on trying to minister the Word of God so that men and women who don't know the Lord would hear, believe, and be saved. To you who have a relationship with our Lord, you're walking with the Lord, these passages of Scripture should help to should help to serve to help you be built up and edified in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. So that you be strengthened in the most holy faith. The Apostle Peter told us to grow in grace, what else? And of the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So if you have your Bibles... Go to St. Mark, the 8th chapter, and beginning to read at verse 33, it reads, Then he called the crowd to him, along with the disciples, and he said, this is Jesus, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 35. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me for the gospel's sake, will save it. Verse 36, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world 
and yet forfeit or lose their soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Verse 38, if anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with his holy angels. Now skip down to Matthew, St. Saint Matthew, the 28th chapter, beginning to read at verse 18, it reads, Then Jesus came to them and said, and this is the NIV Bible, All authority is in heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, underline disciples, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Surely I will, with, I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Now I'm taking for a thought for a sermon topic from the passage the true disciple called to be saints. The true disciple called to be saints. The true disciple called to be saints. And if I was to select a golden text out of these passages of which to focus primarily on, it would be in a, a, a verse 34 of uh, Mark 8. It reads, then he called the crowd to him along with, his, along with his disciples and said, whoever wants to be my disciple, underline the word disciple, must dis deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Well, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me, the king, old king James says, for my sake, and for the gospel will save it. Whosoever wants to be my disciple, the true disciple called to be saints. This is now the seventh sermon in our salvation series on the subject you must be born again. And I've taken the time to construct these lessons, these sermons, as God has given them to me, uh, to be put into a package. We're going to put these on our website. In fact, m most of them are already on for you to be able to go back and to take each message one by one and to read them in order and understand and receive what the Word of the Lord says. This is the Born Again ser series. In our first uh, sermon, we talked from, the, from St. John, the third chapter where Jesus gave these words to Nicodemus. You must be born again. No one can enter the kingdom of God. No one can see the kingdom of God unless you are born again. We understand that to be born again, as we've talked before, is, it means to be regenerated. It means to be changed. It means to be born again, born from the water, born of the spirit, not natural birth, but spiritual birth. And then sermon number two, we took, we took, we gave you the sermon, the new birth, why you must be born again, the necessity of being born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. And because we must be born again, he's made it possible that we can be born again. It's a spiritual rebirth, the, tre the regeneration. Uh, sermon number three, we gave you who we are in Christ. Once we are born again, when we come into regeneration, when we've been regenerated, and we come into a relationship with the Lord of Christ, with, with the Lord of uh, Jesus Christ, we have to then begin to understand who we are. We need to then begin to walk in the newness of life and see ourselves the, the way God sees, the way God sees us. Well, who we are in Christ is that we are new creations in Christ Jesus, and we walk in newness of life. We become spiritually alive in Him. We're no longer enemies of God, but we are now children with God. We that we will come to understand who we are in Christ. In sermon number four, we, we taught you must be identified with Christ through baptism. It's not enough to just give a to give mouth service. It's not enough 
to just you know to just say that you're that you uh, are in relationship with Christ. You have to be uh, identified with Him, and we gave you the scripture that through is through water baptism. Through water baptism, water baptism is your your badge of identification. Water baptism is your testimony to the world that you've died to your old life and you have risen to newness of life. That you are no longer just of, of the world, but now you are up in the spiritual kingdom. You've been united with Christ. You're in the body of Christ. It, it speaks uh, volumes in terms of your obedience to the word of God. Amen. Water baptism is your public declaration of your faith. Water baptism is your identification card. Uh, that you have died to the old way of life. And then in sermon number five we gave you, you have been placed in the body of Christ through baptism. We gave you water baptism and then we're placed into the body, this mystical body of Jesus Christ, where Christ is the head. We're the body, we're the members of his body through spirit baptism. We understand it's the Holy Ghost that baptizes us. He places us into the body of Christ. We become joined to him. We become uh, 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 he in us and we in him we become united uh, together with Christ Jesus in the body of Christ we become united together we, the, we jo enjoy not only a fellowship with God but then a fellowship with each other with, uh, with uh, fellow bor uh, born again Christians that occupy Amen. or who are in the body of Christ we, we have received union with Christ Amen. We're, we're considered in union with Christ and he in us. As he is with the Father, so we are in him. We've been placed in the body of Christ through spirit baptism. We've been placed in the body of Christ by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. And, and as such, we've been made to drink of the, of, of, of the of partake of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we have become partakers of his spirit. We become partakers of of his divine nature. We gave you that in Peter. Last Sunday we gave you, Sunday before last, Sermon 6 we gave you, the Spirit-filled believer, walking by the Spirit. The Spirit-filled believer. We understand that the third person of the Godhead, the, and yes, we are Trinitarians. We don't back down from that. We understand that, the, that, that God has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Spirit. Here, the uh, Deuteronomy 6 chapter. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So we have one God, not three gods. In spite of what some folk on the, on the radio is saying, on the internet and YouTube and all these other non-Trinitarians, listen, uh, we, we, I have a mandate from God. We're not going to spend time debating. If you choose not to uh, believe that God is, how God has chosen to reveal himself, that's between you and God. But in this church, we understand that God has chosen to reveal himself. The Father is called God. The Son is called God. And the third person of the Holy Spirit, who referred to as the Holy Spirit, is also called God. Amen. Peter called him God when he told Ananias and Sapphira. You, Sapphira, you not have perpetrated this lie against man, but you have lied to God, the Holy Ghost. So we understand that the spirit-filled believer is walking in the spirit. We walk in the spirit. Jesus told us that uh, while, the, while, the, while the new life is conditioned of, our, of being in Christ, the manifestation of that life is dependent on Christ being on the inside. And when Christ is on the inside, when Christ is living within us, well, we are abiding on that vine that Christ said in St. John 15, that he, I am the vine, vine, you are the branches. When we are uh, 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 on the vine and, and, the, and the, 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 the life blood of the vine is, is, being, uh, uh, is, is, is coming through us, the Bible tells us, Jesus said, you're going to produce fruit. There should be fruit that, that, gives, yeah. that gives evidence yeah. of a spirit-filled life. This fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit, the, the Holy Spirit on, living on the inside, will produce fruit in you. And we gave you uh, 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 the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, the fifth chapter. In fact, we went on to, to understand from the Word of God as we taught that if we would walk in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the lust or the appetites of our flesh. The fruit of the Spirit then is love and joy and peace and long-suffering and gentleness 
goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, the Bible says of which the, such there is no law. We have nine kinds of fruit that the child of God is expected to bear. God, is, Listen, God wants you to produce fruit, more fruit, and much fruit. He wants this fruit to be evidenced in your life. And this is the spirit-filled believer walking by the Spirit. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so in today's lesson, in today's sermon on today, in sermon number seven, the true disciple. We want to talk about just discipleship. We want to, you know, we talked a lot about what the Lord has done. We talked a lot about what God is, how God births us into the family of God, how he places us into the body of Christ, how he, re he regenerates us. But we talked a lot about what God has done. Now there's some things that we should do. There are some things that we are required to do in addition to bearing fruit. We are required to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are required, the disciple is called to be a saint. The disciple the, is called to be a, 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 a saint. Christian, now watch this. Now I'm going to take my time right here because I want to I I thoroughly communicate this and not be ambiguous. Christian, the word Christian is not synonymous with a disciple. I'll say that again. The word Christian, the term, the, 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 the use of the word, is not synonymous per se with being a disciple. Now, is the word Christians in the Bible? Yes, we're going to get to it. I'm going to give you scripture. But, the, but being a Christian and being a disciple, are, 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 they're, they, they're not synonymous with each other. And we're going to explore this in detail. Christians, and watch this, Christians should be disciples of Jesus, understanding and following his commandment in life completely committed and allowing him to transform our lives, all right? Every Christian should be a disciple. Every Christian should be a disciple. A disciple, then, is a learner and a follower of his teacher. It's not just a badge you wear. It's not just a you know a title or a phrase that we use. It, it it has a meaning to it. A disciple is a learner and a follower of his teacher. It is one who hears. Watch this. He hears. He understands, and he obeys. He hears. How can he hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he's sent? So he's sent. The preacher preaches. You hear then we must understand. Understanding has to be essential. Roman, uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter, the Apostle Paul, that we believe that penned that letter, writes to, the, to those that are uh, the, the, Hebrew, Christian, uh, the Hebrew, Hebrew believers, that he says, you know, by this time, you ought to be teachers. But instead, we ha you have need that someone writes to you again uh, concerning the fundamentals of the Christian faith. That's because they're hearing, but they're not understanding. And then there are those that, that, that do hear, and, and because you choose not to obey, you then become dull of hearing. In the same passage of uh, 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 book, the Apostle Paul talks about those who have become dull of hearing. Now watch this. You can hear the word of God and hear the word and choose not to, to believe it, not to obey it. When you don't obey it, it then seems to become like water off a duck's back. You, you become desensitized. To the, to the word of the Lord when you don't when you hear it and, and don't obey it. This is what James is talking about when he says, you know, don't just be a hearer of the word and not be a doer. For a person who hears the word and doesn't do it is like a man who looks at himself in the mirror and after sees his, his vision, his image, then walks away from the mirror and then forgets what he looks like. Now that's a pathetic person who knows, looks at yourself and see all of the flaws and the blemishes in your face and then walk away from the mirror and then actually forget what you look like. That's what the, the that's 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 the, the metaphor that the that the that you that James uses to explain someone who hears the word and don't do it. The Bible says here that a disciple, what a disciple or a true disciple is, is one who hears the word, he understands the word, and then he obeys the word. That's what a disciple is. Now, when we, when we're gonna, again, we can talk about Christians, you know, and, and actually the Christian, and, and to some people, has almost become a negative term because 
uh, you know, we, we use the term so loosely, yeah. particularly in America. You know, yeah. everybody and their mama's a Christian. <laughs> uh, you know, America's a Christian nation. Yeah. Well, it ain't necessarily so. <laughs> because a, a person uh, a, a person who is a Christian should be a disciple. Yeah. A person who is a Christian yeah. should be a hearer and un, an understanding of the word. Have, an, yeah. have a good under, spiritual understanding. We're, yeah. we're talking about understanding. We're talking about spiritual understanding. We're talking about the understanding, the enlightenment, yeah. the, the illumination that the Holy Spirit gives you in your spirit to where when you read the word of God, that you have an understanding. It, it, it's, it's food to your spirit. It's yeah. food to your, to your inner man. Yeah. And, 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 and you begin to uh, 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 gravitate toward having the mindset of God yeah. because you understand the word. You heard it. You understand it. And now yeah. you can then put it in practice by power of the Holy Ghost. Because again, the Holy yeah. Ghost is, is the is the agent. He's the active person right. that's at work yes. in you to will yes. and to do of God's good pleasure. Amen. You can't obey it unless the Holy Spirit we yield to Him yes. to allow Him to uh, take that word of God that we have heard and understood, and then to be able to uh, apply it. Amen. Amen. The, the disciple is a follower. Yes. And a uh, a, a learner and a follower yes. of his teacher. Yes. Now you have to be uh, not just uh, in this case the teacher is the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word the teacher is the word of God, yes. line upon line, precept yes. upon precept, yes. which is what we endeavor to do with this church is to teach you the word of God. We don't want to give you no philosophy, but philosophies go out the window. We're not here to give you my opinion, a man's opinion, anybody else's opinion. We're here to give you what the Word of God Amen. says because it's the Word of God that prevails. It's the Word of God that comes to give you strength. And so we need to be disciples. We need to be learners and followers of what we have learned in the Bible. Amen. The Word of God. The Word of God is the teacher. The Word of God is the teacher. It says in another place in the, in the Old Testament that, look, my people that perish because of a lack of knowledge. Because when you lack knowledge, then you uh, then you lack understanding. If you lack knowledge, you lack understanding. I said a third. If you lack knowledge, you you lack understanding. And if you have no understanding, you have no knowledge. You have no understanding. Therefore, you can't obey something that you don't understand and have no knowledge of. So the Bible says, so people perish. My people perish, and, and, and not just Old Testament saints, but those that are even in, within the body of Christ. You stand defeated, whooped, and beat up because. We don't have a good, firm understanding of what the Word of God says. We have no victory in our life, even though the Bible says God has given us victory. You're not conquering. You, you, you whooped and defeated, even though God has made us more than conquerors. It says it in His Word. If, but if you don't know it, if you don't know that God has made you a, 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 a conqueror, if you don't understand that, that God, that what your place is in God, that if you don't understand how to see yourself the way God sees you. And I, I've used this metaphor or this saying enough. I know some of you all are probably getting tired of hearing it. You're, not, you know, you are, you're going to hear, uh, me, hear me say it ad nauseum, ad infinitum. Stop saying that you're just an old sinner saved by, by grace. That, that's not, you know, some term of, you know, of humility. You know, well, I don't want to you know, express myself in pride. Uh, yes, you need to see yourself as God sees you. You are a child of king, uh, of the king. You are in the family of God. You are an heir to God. You are a joint heir to Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that he's given us an inheritance. Amen. We have an inheritance, man. Amen. But we, you know, you're more than just an old sinner saved by grace. You're more than that. God, listen, the Lord's God said... His only begotten Son, the Son gave His life. God sent the Father, sent the very best that heaven had to offer. Not for you to just waddle, waddle in some false humility to say that you're just no sinner saved by set great. You're a child of the King. You're somebody Amen. in God. Amen. You are in the family of God. Amen. God is your Father. And the Bible says that my Father is rich. He's rich in the houses and land. Yeah. He's where all the silver and gold belong to him. Yeah. So you know what? If my, I, I can claim riches because if my father's rich and I'm in him, then I'm rich. Amen. The Bible Thank goes God. on to tell me that, listen, you have a relationship yeah. with God. I don't have a religion. I yeah. have a relationship. Yeah. I am obligated. Listen, I belong to God, and He belongs to me. Amen. I'm in God. Praise I'm a God. child of God. God. I'm a son of God. I have a place in God. Praise Amen? God. Amen. You got to be.
be a disciple. You got to be a learner and a follower. Amen. You got to be a learner. Listen, just it's more. You got to just be. Just it's more than just saying that you're a Christian. All right. We we we're, we're not. You know, uh, putting a um, a shroud or or a, a negativity on the term Christian. But a disciple is more than just a Christian. Every Christian should be a disciple. Amen. You got people walking around right now. That's, you know, they, you know, they they wear the banner of a uh, Christian. They live and work nothing. They <laughs> they don't even know John three sixteen. They they can't. They don't. They don't even know Jesus wept. They can't quote one single verse. But yet we're a Christian. Why are you a Christian? Well, because my mama was a Christian. My daddy was a Christian. You know, my granddaddy was a good Christian. I I live in America. I'm living a Christian. Listen, that doesn't make you. A, a, a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ because you are an American. Alright, let me get off of that. Discipling, making a, helping people know Christ personally. Let me say that again. Disciple is, is discipling is making and, and helping people know Christ personally. Follow him completely and make him known Broadly, it's coming alongside a disciple and training him to follow Christ. This is what we endeavor to do in this ministry. This is what we endeavor to do. This is the mantle that we've taken on. Me personally, as pastor teacher, I'm the, I, you know, listen, I, my job is to, as pastor is to be pastor and teacher. It's my responsibility to teach you the word of the Lord. As I learn, as I'm enlightened by the Holy Ghost, is to teach you what the Word of God says, and and, and that's, this is what uh, Evangelist Harden, me and my wife, we've taken this uh, this uh, journey together, and, and this responsibility and this uh, commitment to God to be able to teach the Word of God, to give birth to disciples. We want you, after you come into a knowledge of Jesus Christ, to then become a, a further learner and, and follower of Him. Amen? Amen. To be a disciple. Praise the name of the Lord. The true disciple is called to be saints. Okay, let's go to the text. In Mark, the 8th chapter. Mark, eight, Mark the 8th chapter. Mark, chapter 8, verse 34. Then he called the crowd to him. This is Jesus, along with the disciples. And he said, now we're talking about Jesus and his disciples. We understand he had... Uh, at least 70 disciples. He had more than that uh, when he fed the 5,000, if you recall, that after he fed the 5,000, uh, and then he began to minister to them concerning uh, communion, that he that, uh, that, uh, uh, that comes to him must eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, else you have no part with me. My Father is in me, and I'm in you, and you'll be established in me if you partake of the flesh and blood of the Son. We understand that to be communion. We understand that it, it, it's, it has a, a greater meaning of concerning his death, burial, and his resurrection. So it has to do with have understanding of his mission and what he comes to do on the earth. The Bible says at that point when they said this is a hard saying, and, and most of them turned around and left. See, and they, and they were supposedly disciples. They said, you know, this is a hard saying. How can this man give us flesh to eat? How can he give us blood to drink? And this is a hard saying. And the Bible says in St. John, the sixth chapter, they all walked off and, and, and no longer followed him. You see, a disciple is someone that's committed. A true disciple, and see, yeah, yes, here, we, here we go again. Someone that's a, a true disciple is committed to the Lord. He's committed to his teacher. He's committed to learning. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, 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 a fad. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a just, right. you know, you got caught up in the fancy. Right. And you went and, you know, you, you heard a word and you, you were touched for, for a minute and by, by the time you got home, you know, it, it you know, right. it's like water. It, it wore off. Right. It, you know, it wore off like a drug. You know, it's like you pour. Uh, 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 we're talking more so than just discipline. Let me say that again. When Jesus is talking about self-denial, he's talking about more than just discipline. 
Now, does it include discipline? Yes. Does it does it, it include being in control of yourself? Yes. Does it does it mean that you can't be a disciple, a learner, a follower, and be out of control? Yeah, it means those things. But to but to deny yourself means that there's certain um, things in life or issues in life that you feel that because you're an American that you have a right to do this and you have a right to receive it. You got a right. You know, in America, we we you know we're spoiled by the term "I have the right." <laughs> I have the right, and you let you let your you, you, the, the, the Cal you let America's rights, your Bill of Rights, define your Christianity. No, your rights lie within the purview of the sovereign God. Mm -hmm. Your your rights, what it is what is what God allows Amen. you to do or or or, or, or not do uh, to, that's confined in His Word, that where we define our rights, our what our morals are should be. How we should line up, how our lives should please God is under the, and that's what Jesus is talking about. If those who who are going to be my disciples, you're going to walk by the same rule, and you're going to mind the same thing. You're going to walk by the rule, by the standard by which God has set. You're not going to walk by the beat of the drum of America. You're not going to walk by the beat of the drum of the culture. You're not going to walk by the beat of the drum of what the president Amen. said, or what the Congress said, Amen. or what they, you know, what your mama, what your daddy took. No, You're, those that are going to be that are going to be committed to the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Praise he said, God. if you're going to be to those who want to be my disciples, they must deny themselves. There are some things that you have to say that God says no to, and because He says no to it, then it means no to you too. Amen. My God today. That's one of the last things we don't want to be told is no. We don't want to be told. You know, it's carefree. It's America. You know, I can do what I want to do. I just put loose and fancy free. I want to do what I want to do and they can't nobody stop me. Amen. I'm grown. I pay all the bills in my house. I'm 21. I'm, I'm you know, I do what I want to do. I pay my car. Uh, fair to comb my hair. What's <laughs> I do what I want to do. You know, and, and the thing about it is, is that, listen, when we, are un when we are disciples of Christ, when we understand that our citizenship is in heaven, when we understand that God, Jesus Christ, is the king, he's not only the savior, but he's Lord. And because he's Lord, he is the Lord of your life. He dictates what we can and what, we, what, what, our, what our liberties are and where our uh, restrictions lie. Amen. A disciple is more than a student. He is a student, but he's more than just a student because a, uh, because a student identifies with someone who he's devoted themselves to. He's devoted to someone who's living the kind of, of life in accordance with the one that they follow. So he's more than just, just learning about something or somebody. It's learning in devotion to that person. It's, it's a commitment. It's, it, you're committed to being like that person. Or in this case, being like the Lord. A disciple is more than a student. He identifies. We want to be identified with Christ. We want to be identified as a disciple. And when we did identify is because we are a follower and a learner. One who hears, he understands, and he obeys. Amen. I cannot emphasize the, the, the third pillar in, the, in, that, in that stool. To hear, to understand, and to obey. In verse 35, Jesus says, For whoever wants to ship, whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me and for the and for the gospel's sake, or for the sake of the gospel, will save it. Here again, we're talking about a kind of a, a, a commitment uh, uh, that we are willing so much to the extent of giving our lives. For the disciple, uh, as a disciple for our Christ. That's commitment. That's commitment to the end. That's commitment. Verse 36. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, Jesus says, and yet forfeit their soul? Mm. If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, and it's adulterous, and, I, and, and look at how he says this. I'm going to read this verse slow, verse 38. If anyone is ashamed of me, that is, you don't want to be identified with Christ, 
You don't want to walk in obedience to him. You know, you, 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 get, you don't want to stand up for him and be counted. The Bible says in, 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 in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, that we need to uh, we get, we give our whole bodies to Christ. We, we should be ready to, to, let me quote the verse. Find me Romans 12 and 1. Romans the 12th chapter. Okay. I want to give you this real quick. Romans 12. Romans 12 and 1. Praise the name of the Lord. In Romans the 12th chapter, verse 1, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You see, that's what a disciple does. That's what a real follower of the Lord does. He's, 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 he's willing to sacrifice his, his, your body, sacri uh, to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Now, God is not asking you, per se, to go hang yourself or go get killed, but to be able to present your body for his use, mm -hmm. to be able to present yourself unto mm -hmm. him, he says, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. So in verse 38 it says, If anyone is ashamed of me, you're not willing to, to, to sacrifice yourself, to, to submit your body, to commit your body. He says, Anyone who is ashamed of me and my words, where at? In this adulterous and sinful generation. We're told in Titus, I believe, the Apostle Paul tells Titus, that we're, we are to live soberly. That we're to live holy, where? In the midst of a wicked and perverse generation. And if this generation is not wicked and perverse, I don't know what is. America has a components of a wicked and perverse generation that we're living in. Yeah, you don't, don't listen, you can't tell me, well, you know, we're a god godly nation. And we're the listen, we've told you before that America is living in a bit in rebellion. When you twenty you kill twenty-five million aborted babies. You're living in rebellion against God. That's a wicked and perverse generation. When homosexuality and lesbianism is running rampant in the land, when even the president now is talking about hiring and putting in his cabinets gays and lesbians and, and those who are practicing homosexuals. You know, listen, this, we're living in a wicked and perverse generation. We, we, the generation is, we're living in a generation of, Thieves and robbers, white collar crime. I'm not just talking about you know in, in the ghettos, but I'm talking white collar crime. The, the, the thieves and robbers that that live on Wall Street. We're talking about what it means to be a disciple. The true disciple is called to be a saint. In the early church, now let me show you this, and we're gonna be through. In the early church. When the early church began in Acts, those who believed in Jesus were identified as disciples. Yes. Uh -huh, let me show you. In Acts 6 and 7, it says, And the word of God continued to increase. Mm -hmm. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. They were disciples. They heard, they understood, and they obeyed. Amen. They were called disciples. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiply greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. You see, there again, there's, there's, there's the, the, that rubric that I gave you of hearing, understanding, and obedience. They were referred to now as disciples. This is in keeping with the Great Commission. This lines up exactly in Acts 7, 6, and 7, 
lines up exactly with God's great commission that Jesus gave. Yeah. This is in keeping with the great commission in which Jesus commanded, go therefore and do what? Make disciples. Now, he could have said Christians here, but this is what the word of the Lord says. Go therefore and make disciples. Now, is it wrong to be called a Christian? No, they were first called Christians in Antioch. But, it, it, but, the, but the, the plethora of scripture says that they were called disciples. And we know that a disciple is one who hears, who understands, and as these priests did, they obeyed the faith. They were obedient to the faith, Acts 6 and 7. Go ye therefore and make disciples. Where at? Of all nations. Baptizing them, there's an identification bad. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, yeah. teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. Because that's what a disciple will do. He will be taught. He will, be, he will hear and understand and be obedient to his teacher. He's willing to be taught. He's willing to learn. He's willing to be obedient. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Making disciples is something Jesus wanted his followers to do. Go make disciples. Go make, yes, we want to get people, so you got to be saved to be a, 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 a disciple. you got to be, if you're going to be a Christian, you still need to be a disciple. Go make disciples. Making disciples is something Jesus commanded. It's not an option. We should be teaching people after they hear. How can they hear without a preacher? So somebody got to preach. Amen. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good tidings uh, to those who... Uh, somebody got to preach. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians, it's by the foolishness of preaching that God has confounded Amen. the wise. Amen. We understand that we, that we all came into faith because somebody taught her. We preached the word. We heard... The word of God preached under the anointing of the Holy yeah, Ghost. But yeah. then after you hear the word of God, you don't need a steady diet of preaching, preaching, preaching. Jesus. Now you need to, even, right. you you need to as, as, as sincere That's babes right. in Christ, uh, 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 as babes in Christ That's desire right. the sincere That's milk right. of the word. Amen. That you may grow thereby. Amen. And then after, you, after sucking meat, uh, uh, getting the sincere milk of the word, at Amen. some point you should graduate to start eating meat. Amen. Baby, if you got a, a boy, he's nine years old, he's still sucking bottles, something wrong with him. He's, he's, his, his growth has been retarded. We, we, we have, you know, we, you take him to the doctor. You said something wrong with my baby. He, he won't eat meat. He will, all he want to do is suck, dog, suck on a bottle. He has to graduate off a bottle and start eating meat. Amen. That he might be sustained and built up and fortified. Amen. 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 Jesus said, I command you teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, I'll be with you always, but I've commanded you to teach. I've commanded you to make disciples. That's a commandment, y'all. It's, it's necessary for us to be taught, to be taught the word of God. Listen, if, you, if you're in a, a church that don't teach the Bible, get out. If you're in a ministry where, you know, all they want to talk, you know, they want to, you know, they want to sing have concerts and fashion shows, and then nobody ever wants to take the word of God and break it down, and, you know, it's, it's always a show, it's always about singing, you know, we want to shout all over everybody, and, you know, and those things are good if it's done in the spirit and anointing of the Holy Ghost, but if you're not taught the word in your church, you need to get out. Right. Because Jesus gave us a mandate, go into the world and make disciples in all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and teaching them to observe the things that I have commanded you. Teaching them to observe the things that I have commanded. Teaching the Word of God. Amen. Amen. My Lord. As for the word Christian, which means belonging to Christ, mm -hmm. it never appears in the gospel. Now, is it wrong? We have a scripture that says here that in Acts 11, yeah, I'll give you the scripture. In Acts 11, chapter, verses 25 and 26, I'll read it for your hearing. This is so Barnabas, 
went to Tar Tarsus to look for Paul, look for Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch for a whole, and there was a big church in Jerusalem in Antioch. For a whole year, they met with the church, and they taught a great many people. And in, the, and in Antioch, the disciples were first called Christians. They were disciples, but in Antioch, they expanded it to being called Christians. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fighting the word. We're, we're not drawing a negative, a negative card on the word. What we're saying is that they were referred to as disciples. In the early church, they were called disciples, and we understand what a disciple is. A disciple, a Christian, is, 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 is you know, is supposed to be Christ-like. We should be Christ-like, but you can't become Christ-like without becoming a disciple. You can't become more like Christ without being a, a, a hearer, an understander, and a learner, and, and, and walking in obedience. You can't one you guys one serves the other. Being a being a disciple increases your Christ likeness. Becoming more like Christ is dependent upon how much you are becoming a, a disciple. Oh, praise the name Amen. of the Lord. It's one of the few instances in the followers of Jesus' members of, of the early church were identified as Christians. It's one of the few places we know, is to understand it is documented, it's recorded in Acts 11 chapter, and that's why we're not saying it's wrong. But, but the plethora of scripture, particularly the New Testament and Jesus even said, make disciples. Go ye therefore and make disciples. The issue is disciples. Disciple. The emphasis is on it is making disciples. He didn't say make Christians. He said make disciples. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. It's right here in black and white, red in your Bible. It's the words of Jesus. Amen. The letter of Paul and Peter, the letters, most of the letters, many of the letters, watch this, let's take it even further. Many of the letters of Paul and Peter, the apostles. All right? Mm -hmm. Paul, the letters that referred to members of the early church as disciples. In Acts 13 and 52, it reads, And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. The disciples, they didn't, say, they didn't call them Christians. Acts 13 and 52, write it down. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. You can find the word again, disciple, in Acts 20 and 1. Mm -hmm. You can find the word again, disciples, in Acts 21 and 4. That's three passages. That's four passages I gave Then they were also referred to as saints. The, 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 the apostle Peter and Paul referred to the disciples, those that were believers, those that were in Christ, those who were in the body of Christ. They were referred to as saints. All right, in Romans, the first chapter, Romans 1 and 7, write it down, Romans 1 and 7, to all those who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Amen. Called to be saints. Who is he writing to, the, the church at Rome? Those that are called to be saints. Not right, then. just any and everybody, he, he, he has a targeted audience in mind. He's, he's writing to the those that are called, look. And a saint is not somebody that you gotta you move into sainthood for somebody that did good deeds for 30, 40, 50 years and then die and then somebody has to vote and determine whether or not they've achieved sainthood. <laughs> the Bible refers to us, we are called saints. Amen. Believers are referred to in the church, those that are in the church are referred to as saints. We're disciples. Amen. We're saints. We're called to be saints, the true believers. The true disciples called to be saints. 1 Corinthians 16 and 1. Here's another one. 1 Corinthians 16 and 1. It, 16 and 1 read, Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I've given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul, as he's instructing concerning giving of, of donations and of charity, charitable giving, he writes to those that are that are called saints. Again, there's a targeted audience here. He's not talking to any and everybody in Corinth. He's talking to those that are saints. 
They were called saints. They were called disciples. They were called saints. They were called brethren. They were called Christians in Acts 11 chapter in Antioch. And we understand that. And it's not wrong. But in order to be to fulfill your, 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 your Christ likeness, you have to be a disciple. Amen. Can't overemphasize that enough. In Ephesians, the first chapter, here's another one. In Ephesians 1, 1 through 2, it reads, Paul, an apostle, he identifies himself. He identifies his authority. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints. What saints? The, the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Jesus Christ. Grace to you, peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. He leaves it to no doubt who he's talking to, who he's referring to. Those saints that are in Ephesus, he's writing to, he refers to them as saints, just as those that are in Corinth, he's referring to as saints, just as those that are in the church at Rome, he is referring to as saints. Listen, we need to see ourselves as God sees us. We are saints of God. We're the people of God. We're, we're the, we are the extension. We're the ambassadors of Christ oh right here on the earth. We, and so, and because of the way God sees us, we need to act Amen. like it. We Amen. need to be disciples then. Amen. We need to be, be hearers of the word. And, and we ought to be Bibles. Be quick to hear. Quick to hear the word of God. Quick to, uh, you don't turn off to it just because you may not understand. You know, you listen, another thing we can't have to stop doing is, uh, you know, we're going to, Receive the word of God from certain people and not from others. Mm, that's right. Listen, if you you better listen to it. I don't care the if it's Brother Cantaloupe or Sister Watermelon. If they're preaching and teaching the Amen. word of God, you need to receive it. Amen. You need to hear it. You Amen. need to understand it. And you need to obey it. Amen. Well, I'm not going back to go on Sunday night because the Brother So-and-So is going to be preaching. preaching. Y'all, we got that stuff bad. Yep. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to go out and visit on Fifth Sunday. Because on Fifth Sunday, the young people are going to, they're going to, they're going to put the young people up there. Yep. So there. Yep. If the young people, listen, God can use young people. In sure fact, you need to be, we need to be teaching young people. Amen. We need to Disciple them. We, we need to be discipling young Amen. people right now. You need to be teaching Amen. the, the, the yes. young disciples in your church to replace you so when God Absolutely. calls you home, the church can continue yes. on. There's too many churches Amen. that dry up on the vine no you, because we haven't prepared, a, a, we right. haven't discipled a, a, a generation right. underneath Amen. us. And, we, and, and, and we, we had our service and, and did our thing and now yeah. we done got old yeah. and, and decrepit yeah. and can't do nothing. And, and now we kind of understand why the church can't go on. Yep. The church can't go on because you haven't discipled another That's generation. It. You That's haven't it. taught the word of God. You haven't ministered the word of Amen. God. You haven't re 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 replicated yourself, reproduced the godliness within the... Amen. Uh, Praise God. That's it. Y'all want me to get off of that. Discipling young people. Amen. Praise God. Y'all better cut that stuff out on fifth Amen. Sunday. We're going to go visit... Uh, fifth Sunday because you know they won't put the young people up in there. Third you know, uh, <laughs> I, I think I, I believe I'm gonna go visit. Yeah, okay. God knows your heart. God know why you don't oh. man going. But listen, if God used the young people to be able yes, to, to teach the word of God or te teach you the word, yes, them young people can't, can't teach me nothing. Okay. <laughs> See, that's part of our problem. You you can learn from. It, from anybody, Baby. you know, the Bible yeah. says that, that you ought to be able to learn from, listen, Balaam thought the same thing until his jackass talked talk to him. <laughs> God used a jackass to talk to Balaam, the prophet, the false prophet, all right? God can use anybody. God can use it. All right. Y'all don't like that, huh? I'm going to give you, I'm going to close on this, on this, but uh, we said that God, that the true disciple is a follower and he's a learner. The true disciple. The true disciple. God is God wants Amen. true disciples. Amen. A true disciple. True disciples called to be saints. Amen. We gave you in Romans that 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 Paul wrote to the church, to the saints at Rome. He wrote those that were in Ephesus to the church at Ephesus. He referred to them as saints. 
the, to the, the con concerning the collection and the giving of money to, to the church at Corinth, he referred to them as saints. And so finally, we're referred to as brothers. Amen. Just good old brother. In 1 Corinthians 10, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10, it reads, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you will all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, Amen. but that you be perfectly joined together with the same, same mind and the same judgment. He referred to them as brothers. The term brothering refers to more than one guy. They were brethren. They were brothers. They were referred to as brothers. All right, we need another one. In 1 Peter, in 1 Peter, the third chapter, verse 8, it reads, Finally, all of you be of one mind. This is the Apostle Peter. Finally, all of finally, all of you be of one mind. It's kind of like the same thing Paul said, huh? About being joined together in the same mind. Finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers. Be tenderhearted and be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling or reviling, but on the contrary, blessing and knowing that you're all called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. Love each other as brothers. They're referred to as, as saints, as disciples, as saints. As brethren, yeah, we can use Christians. I'm not going to fight against it. But Jesus said, go make disciples. Teaching them to observe all the things that I've taught you. Go make disciples of all nations. Amen. <laughs> Again, Christians, the word Christian is not synonymous with disciple. I think I've, I've, I've laid that foundation now. A Christian is not, a word Christian, the term is not synonymous with a disciple, but Christians should be disciples. Christians should be, this. you can't, listen, if you tell me you're a Christian, I expect you to be a disciple. We learned, in, in two weeks ago, that Jesus taught us in St. John, the 15th chapter, if you, by their fruit you will know them. And so if you are a Christian, if you're a believer, you're attached to the vine, you're in the body of Christ, you ought to be the producing some fruit. So there ought to be some fruit production going on, right? Fruit, more fruit, and much fruit, and then there also we should also be disciples. If we're Christian, there also be, should be some discipling going on. And a disciple is a willing hearer, understander, and learner, and, and, and uh, 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 obedient, obedient to his master. Amen? Amen. Christians should be disciples of Jesus, understanding and following his commandments and life and completely committed to allowing Jesus the word of God to transform their natural lives. Praise, Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to stop right there. This will probably be, unless the Lord gives me uh, an additional sermon. I have so many, but I, I need to go on to some other uh, topics that the Lord has put on my plate to give you. Uh, but I just pray that you will have received something from this ser series, the seven messages. And we took the time, uh, First Lady and I, to uh, put these uh, sermons together uh, with lots of prayer and fasting now uh, to be able to present these to you so that you can be strengthened and built up. Our, our, our primary mandate and thrust is that people will hear the word and be saved. We desire to be saved. We want you to, to desire to be a disciple. Our, our job, our mandate is to make disciples, to fulfill this commandment that Jesus said, go and make disciples. Fantastic message for giving Pastor Anthony the message and helping us to understand what it is to be a disciple of God. Pastor Anthony um, told us today about what a true disciple is and that a true disciple is called to be a saint. And we just thank God for that. There's a saying that uh, people say, especially when, 
you know, some folks are trying to learn their job. The saying is, well, just fake it until you make it. Well, let me just say, as a Christian, we cannot fake it until we make it. <laughs> and those people who will try to fake it, being a disciple of God, they will not make it. Because Jesus will say at the day of judgment, My depart God. from me, My I Lord. know you not. Pastor Anthony has told us that a true disciple of Jesus Christ is a learner, is a follower of Jesus Christ. They're one who hears the word of God. And not only do they hear it, but the Holy Spirit helps them to understand the word. And then the Holy Spirit will help us to obey the word of God. Those are true disciples of God, and they're not fakers. True disciples and My true God. saints of God. Yes. And if you would like to be a true disciple of God, and as a result of being a true disciple, God has told us to go out and to make other disciples, to go out and tell others about his grace, about his love, about his saving grace. And that is the second part of our walk with God, is that God saved us to be a disciple, but then to go and tell others about him. My God. That's our responsibility as a Christian as well. So if you would like to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, yes. I invite you to just repeat this prayer with me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, I confess that I am a sinner, Lord. And Father God, I need your forgiveness. God, you said in your word that if I would confess the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, that I would be saved. God, I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died on Calvary and shed his blood for me that I may be redeemed back to you. And God, right now, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is your son. He saved you this world. And I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior this day. God, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you help me to be a disciple. Help me to make disciples. Lord God, help me to obey your word. Help me to have an ear to hear what you have to say regarding my life that I may be pleasing and my life may be pleasing to you. God, I ask you these things in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, that you said Yes. That once I confess and I believe Jesus yes, Christ is my Lord and Savior, God, you said that I am saved. And I thank you that this moment, Lord God, that you have saved my soul. Oh, God. And I thank you. Help me to, yes. Lord, to obey your word. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So if you prayed that prayer, go to our website. Our website will be shown at the end of this message. And let us know that you prayed that prayer. And we want to send you a Bible that you may be able to continue to study the Word of God with us God. and continue to learn and hear of God yourself by looking at God's Word and, and, and the Holy Spirit uh, teaching you. Father God, we just thank you for your Word today. We thank you, Lord God, that how you have helped us to understand through your Word and by your servant, Pastor Anthony that we are called to be disciples. We are called to have a responsibility, Lord God, to hear your word, oh, Jesus. to understand your word, and then to obey your word, God. That as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we are called, Father God, to learn yes. and to obey. Yes, Lord. And God, we just thank you for that word today. We thank you, Lord God, for reminding us about our responsibilities, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you for our salvation, God. We thank you for the mercy and grace. Oh, God. Now, Lord God, we just pray in the name of Jesus that during these times, during these holiday seasons, God, when people are lonely and during this COVID-19, when they're feeling a little helpless and a little hopeless, God, oh, Lord Jesus. Father God, that you will send someone their way to minister your hope to them, to let them know that there is hope in you. And Father God, we just pray, Lord God, for those who are homeless and do not have, that you oh, provide God. Oh, God. for them, God. Those who have incarcerated parents, Lord God, children of these, that you will provide for them during these times, Lord God, and reach out your arms of love. And even those who are incarcerated, Father God, let them know that there's hope Yes, Lord. in you, God. Father God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you 
for uh, your son, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the grace of God, may the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, be with you all. In Jesus' name, amen.